Today, my goal is to help you guys feel prepared for your quiz coming up on Monday. It is going to be over section 6-1 to 6-6. So we will go over this today, and you should hopefully feel prepared for that quiz. The first thing I want you to remember how to do is to write the percent as a decimal. Where is the imaginary decimal on the 61% class? In front of the Okay, it's at the very end of the number, right in front of the percent sign. So, in order to turn that to a decimal, what do I need to do? Move it twice to the left. And what's my answer? 0.61. Very good. Anar, looking at the next one, where is the imaginary decimal at? Okay, so it's at the end of the number, right? What do I need to do to turn that into a decimal? And what's the answer? Okay, we're getting, getting rid of that percent though, so our decimal now is just going to be 9.43. Number two is just basically opposite of number one. Now we're going to be taking the decimal, but I want you to turn that into a percent. Noah, how do I do that? You move the decimal point over. You are correct. And what would your answer be? 26%. 26% is correct. I want you to bump it off for someone to do problem B. Oh, All right. Uh, Reese, what do we do? You move um, from, the from the decimal to the places and get um, 5, You are correct. All right. How many of you feel pretty comfortable and confident with those two sections? Awesome. Here's another one, also a review. Write the fraction as a decimal and as a percent. Can anyone help me out with remembering how do I turn 7 tenths into a decimal? Ava, what should I do? You are correct. We're going to divide. What is 7 divided by 10? Not point 0.1. 7 divided by 10. All right, very good, 0.7. Now, I don't just want that to be a decimal. I also want it to be turned into a percent. What would that be as a percent? 7%. Okay, you move it over, you've got to give it a little zero, 70%. Okay, so for my final answer, the decimal was 0.7, and the percentage was 70%. Let me have you guys try to do problem B on your own. Let's see, guys. Four-fifths, what is that as a decimal? 0. 0.8. 0. 0.8, very good. And turn that into a percentage, and what do you get? 80%. 80 all right, so I'm going to put it down here. 0. 0.8 is my decimal, which also means 80%. All right, so on your quiz, there's going to be five different formulas that you need to know. Is there anyone who happens to remember what the percent proportion formula is? No, it's not P times of equals is, but that's a great guess. It does have a P, an of, and an is. You're very close. No? Ava, you were the closest. Anyone have a guess? You are correct. Very good. All right, so on that line right there next to it, if you would write, is over of equals P over 100. One way that you can remember proportion is we learned that a proportion is two fractions that equal each other, okay? So is over of equals P over 100. Now there's another one, another formula we got to have memorized. This is the second one for our notes. What is the percent equation? Raise your hand if you remember that, the percent equation. Hayden. That is correct. Good job, Hayden. P times of equals is. That is our percent equation. So for this one, the instructions ask us to use the percent proportion to solve. Remind me again, class, what was the percent proportion that we just wrote down? Is over of equals P over 100. Now I also taught you long ago about separating that question into three different parts, the is, the of, and the P. What should I underline first? 15 is. 15 is. Good job. What should I circle next? 30%. 30 and finally, underline. Of what, number. of what number? Then remember, all we're doing at this point now is just plugging in the is, the of, and the P. 
Matthew, what is my is? 15. 15. Huang, what is my of? X. Okay, X, because we don't know what it is. And Hayden, what is my P? 30. 30, very good. So 30% means the same thing as 30 over 100. Now there's two ways you can solve something like this. Do you, does anyone remember which two ways we could solve it? Talila. Cross products and mental math. At this point, I do not care which one you do. I want you guys to find a method and figure out what X is. All right, it looks like some of you are finishing up. Did anyone do this the mental math way? A few people, okay? So help me with those who did the mental math. We're trying to find this X, so we're working back toward it. What is the missing link to get from a 30 to a 15? 20. Two. two. Should I divide by two or multiply by two? We're going to divide because it's going from bigger to something smaller. So then I have to do 100 divided by 2. Those of you who did mental math, what's 100 divided by 2? 50. If you did um, cross products, how many of you would say you also got the answer of 50? Fantastic. Okay, that's what it should have been. You can find it either way, but you should get the same answer. Okay, let's go on to the next one. For this one, I will do it with you um, using cross products. But first things first, let's separate it into three separate sections. Hope, what should I underline? What number is? What should I circle? 20%. And underline? Very good. Remember, each time we're going to start with the formula. So remind me, class, what is the percent proportion formula? Is over of equals P over 100. Talila, what's my is? X. Brayden, what's my of? 80. Amira, what's my P? 20 over 100. Very good. Now, as I said before, we'll do this one just to make sure you guys understand the cross products way. So you're going to circle them diagonally. Um, Angeline, what should I put on the left? No. Nope, we're going to do it diagonally. Okay, Ava, can you help her? What do we do on the left? Um, 10x on 100x. Okay, we're going to multiply 100 times x, and on the right? Um, 20 times 80. 20 times 80, or 80 times 20. The order does not matter, okay? At this point, Jalen, is there anything I can do on the left side? Wait, no. no, is there anything I can do on the right side? Yes, Jalen, what's 20 times 80? Um, 1,600. 1, okay, now Angeline, our goal is to get X by itself. What do I have to do? Very good. We're going to divide by 100 on both sides. And Anar, when you do that, what do you get for X? That is correct. And if you ever wanted to double check it, you could go ahead and plug back in the 16 up here in your X and then figure out if this and this equals each other. Okay? So that's how the first page of our notes goes. Does anyone have any questions about that? All right. If you don't have any further questions, let's go ahead and turn to the next page. Okay, for this one, our instructions are a little different. The problems look identical, but the instructions ask us now to use the percent equation instead of the proportion. On your quiz, I'm going to make sure that you understand how to use both of them, all right? Some problems you'll get to choose, but if the instructions ask you to use the percent equation, you got to show me that you know what that is. So, guys, what is the percent equation? P times of equals is. Very good. And now, just like we did before, we're going to underline and circle it into the three separate parts. Gavin, what are my three separate parts that I should underline and circle in the original problem? Okay, is that my is, my of, or my P? Good job. So we'll underline 48 is. Good job. Circle the 75% and underline. Very good. Hayden, plug it in, plug it in. I've got to change that percent to a decimal, so what would that be, Hayden? Very good. Matthew, what's my of? X. Hope, what's my is? Very good. Amira, how do I get that X by itself? 
Very good, we're gonna divide by 0.75 on both sides. Notice she didn't say by 75. She took the actual number that was there. Let's plug this into our calculators. Throughout the day, I've had a lot of people who are trying to put this denominator in their calculator first. Remember, the top number comes first, so put that in your calculator first. Class, what is 48 divided by 0 0.75? 64. Should I add a percent sign? No, going back to the original problem, it says 48 is 75% of what number? So you want to go ahead and leave that as a number, and the correct answer is 64. I'd like you guys to try to do problem B on your own. Remember as you're doing it, it is asking us to use the percent equation, so start off with writing P times of equals is. Okay, as I just went and looked, I would say at least half of you got it correct, and the other half of you were on the right track, but you messed up on just a couple little parts. So let me explain this to you. 10 is, circle the what percent, and underline of 40. Guys, what's my P? X. X. What's my of? A. What's my is? How many of you would say, yes, I set mine up correctly just like this? If you yes. did not, that's okay. Erase it and fix it. Now I want X to get by itself. What do I do? Divide by 40, okay? Once again, I saw a lot of people who did this way too, and this is where some people messed up. Many of you put the denominator first and did 40 divided by 10 and got the answer of four. If you did that, I want you to erase. Instead, we're doing 10 divided by 40. What is 10 divided by 40, class? 0.25. Now, here's the next thing I saw a lot of people. They said, okay, I got it, it's 0.25. But if I go back to my original problem, it says 10 is what percent of 40. So what should I do to that 0. 0.25? To right. We got to turn that into a percent. So what should the answer have been? 25%. Raise your hand if you got that right the first time before I explained it. All right. Excellent. For the next one, we've got modeling real life. And it says, of the 200 middle schoolers, 158 of them signed up for the field trip. What percentage of the students signed up for the field trip? All right, so for a problem like this, uh, like Isaac just mentioned, we are allowed to do it two separate ways. You could do this way. What is that called? The percent proportion. Or you could use the percent equation. How many of you would say you would rather use the proportion, the one that has the two fractions? How many of you would say you'd rather use the equation, the P times of equals is? On a problem like this, because the instructions don't tell you which way to do it, you are allowed on the quiz or test to do it whichever way you would prefer. One thing I do want you to remember, we know one of them, the is or the of, is the part, and the other one is the whole. Does anybody remember which one is the part? Is that my is or my of? Yes. Is is the part, okay? So if you would, just take your red pen, and I want you to just mark that the is is going to be your part, okay? So with a story problem or a modeling real life problem, we need to know something like that. So over here, that is is also going to be the part, which means the of is the whole or the total, okay? So depending on which one you are, use your red pen just to mark it so that you can remember when you're studying for this the is will always be the part, and the of will always be the whole. Okay, so let's start plugging some things in. The is we know is the part. What part of those students signed up for the field trip? 158, 158 of them. So instead of that is, I'm going to go ahead and plug in 158. Now, if you're doing the proportion, I'm doing that on the left side. If you're doing the equation, I'm doing it on the right side. And I want you to see in the end that you will get, hopefully, the same answer no matter which way you do it. You guys do not have to do it on your notes both ways unless you just want it in your notes, okay? Let's go next to the of. The of, we said, is the whole amount. What is the whole number of middle schoolers here in the school? 200. So we're going to now replace the of with 200. And do I know what my P is? Nope. So we're going to keep that there as a P over 100. Now I want you guys to try it on your own to see what answer you come up with. You're trying to figure out what percentage of the students signed up for the field trip, all right? So go ahead and do it right now on your own. 
Okay, so as you just did that, you did not have to do it both ways. On the left side, remember over there, that's the proportion. Raise your hand if you're doing it that way. Okay, on the right side is the equation. Raise your hand if you're doing it that way. All right, a lot more of you chose that way. Let's talk about the one on the left. Did anyone do the one on the left with mental math? Let's imagine that you had, guys, you're trying to figure out how to get from a 158 to a P. So then I would have to discover how to get from a 200 down to a 100. What would the missing link be for that, guys? A 2, okay? So we would have to divide by 2. What is 158 divided by 2? Seventy-nine. Okay, so you would get seventy-nine percent for that. How many of you did it that way, but you did cross products? Did you guys get seventy-nine percent? Okay. Let's go on to the one on the right in the big, the big yellow circle. What do I have to do to get that p by itself? Divide by two hundred on both sides, and when I do that, this cancels out. What's one fifty-eight divided by two hundred? Point seventy-nine. Now change that to a percent, and what do you get? 79%. Notice both answers came out the same. So when you do your quiz or your test, I do not care which way you do it. Just show your work and you should get the same answer either way. All right, for the next one, number nine, uh, this is another formula that we got to have memorized. Does anyone remember the percent of change formula? We just did this at the beginning of the week as a review problem. All right, I'm going to tell you what it is. Oh, do you have a guess? It is the AOC, that's the amount of change over the, does anyone else remember? The original. the original. All right, good job, Hayden. Now we're going to be using that formula to help us to find the answer here, okay? Find the percent of change as an increase or a decrease and round to the nearest tenth percent. Let's imagine that there was a tree, okay? So the tree gets planted at eight feet tall, but it grows. How much does it grow to? 24 feet. We're going to start with our formula. Huang, what's the formula for the percent of change? AOC over the original. Very good. Everyone plug that in. AOC over the original. Remember to find the amount of change. You'll take the bigger number and subtract the smaller number. So we're going to plug in 24 minus 8 over, Huang, what was the original height of that tree? 8 feet. 8 feet is correct. Matthew, what's 24 minus 8? 16. So we're going to do 16 divided by 8. Hope, what is 16 divided by 8? 2. Two. Now, it isn't asking us for a whole number. It asks us for a percentage. Where is the decimal point on that 2? Behind it. Behind it. So in order to change that into a percent, we have to go 1, 2. What percentage is that? 200%. 200%. Now imagine the tree was 8 feet and it grew to be 24 feet. Did it increase or decrease in height? Increase. It increased because it got bigger. So our answer is a 200% increase. All right, we're going to the next one. Let's imagine that an airplane is going 300 miles an hour and then it goes to 210 miles per hour. I want you guys to find the amount of change and then write down whether it is an increase or a decrease. So the first thing you're going to want to do is start with your formula, AOC, divided by or over the original amount. All right, you guys try it on your own. Stand once you have it figured out. All right, so for the amount of change, it started at 300, and it changed down to 210. But remember, the original amount was 300. As I walked around, some people plugged in 210 at the bottom. Make sure you put the original amount. The original amount will always be what comes first in the original problem. Guys, what's 300 minus 210? 90. 90. What is 90 divided by 300? 0.3. How do I turn that into a percentage? It only moves twice. Listen, a lot of people got the answer 300. Be careful with that. It only moves over two times, so the correct answer should be what? 30%. 30%. Now, it started at 300 miles, and it went down to 210, so the answer should have been decrease. Next one, we have another formula, so I want you to write this in red pen. What is the percent of error formula? You're going to take the amount of error, 
okay, how much they were off, and divide it by the actual amount. Once again, please pull out your red pen and go ahead and fill this in in the blank. Okay, for this one, Mrs. Appleby estimated that 555 people would come to the chorus concert, but she wasn't perfectly right. How many people came to the concert? 600. 600. So we need to figure out what was her percent of error. How much wrong was she? So as always, if you would, please write down the original formula, the one that we just wrote down, the amount of error over the actual amount. Okay, someone help me. How do I find the amount of error? I'm going to subtract. Isaac, what do I have to subtract? You have to subtract 555 by 600. Okay, so we're always going to put the bigger number first because otherwise your answer would have come out as a negative. So we're going to do 600 minus 555 over the actual amount of people. Talila, how many people came to the concert? Um, 600. 600, good job. So we'll divide that by 600. Gavin, what is 600 minus 555? No, 600 minus 555. 45, okay, so we're going to put 45 divided by 600. Reese, what is 45 divided by 600? 0. Good job, 0. 0.075. Angeline, how do I turn that into a percent? We're not going to move it to the left. We want to move it to the right. When you move it to the right, what do you get? 7.5%. Very good. And that was her percent of error. All right, number 13 says to find the selling price. The original price of something was $42, and the percent of the discount was 15%. So we did this earlier this week. We're going to start with the formula P times of equals is. So the P is going to be our percent. The of is going to be the original or the starting price. And then the is is going to be the selling price or the ending price. I want you guys to see if you remember how to do this. Try to plug those numbers in. All right, help me out to see. As I walked around, I saw a lot of different answers, but what did you guys plug in for the percent? 15. We want to change it to a decimal, so what did you put? 0.15. Okay, this is what I saw most people did. I think just a couple did not do this. Times of the original price. What's the original price? $42. $42. Dollars. When you did that, this is the answer I saw a lot of you got. 6.3. Remember, we're trying to find a price. So what would that be as a price? $6. And remember the zero at the end, 30 cents. Does this make sense? Does that answer make sense? This is the answer I saw most people came up with. Here's, what, here's what's concerning to me. If the original price is $42 and they take 15% off, 15% is not that much. It's kind of a small amount. Does it make sense for the price to drop all the way down to $6.30? No. No, it really doesn't. Guess what that is that you found out there? The the That's the discount. That's how much they're taking off. So that's $6.30 off the original price. So now how would I find the selling price using that information? you got to subtract it. It's a discount. Remember, discount takes away some of the cost. So it was $42, and they take away the discount, $6.30. Now this will give you the cost or the selling price. What is the selling price, class? $35.70. Now, some of you are looking like, I don't remember doing that at all, because this is not the way that I taught you to do a problem like this. Does anyone remember how I taught you to do a problem like this? Huang, what did I do? Very good. Here's the deal. Every item at this store costs 100%. But these people said, I'm going to give you a discount. I'm going to take some off of that 100%. What was the discount they gave to us? 15%. Mm -hmm. 
So if you think about it, we've got 100% minus 15% gives us the total percentage we have to pay. What percentage do we have to pay? What's 100 minus 15? 85%. That's the price or the percentage that we pay. Turn 85% into a decimal. What would that be? 0.85. So I'm going to show you the other way that I've taught you to do this problem. 0.85 times the $42. When you do that in one step, you're going to get the answer. What is 0.85 times $42? $35.70. Is that the same answer we got before? Yes. yes. Notice, look right here. That's the same answer. But most of you told me that that $6.30 was the answer. Be careful. I do not care which way you do it. To me, this way is a little bit easier, but a lot of times people are forgetting to put in the percentage that they pay. So you can choose when it comes time for your quiz or test which one works better for you as long as you take off the discount and tell me the actual selling price. All right, let's go on to the next one. This is not a discount. What kind of a problem is problem B? Markup. A markup. For the markup, you can actually stick that exact percentage in there. So we've got started off with P times of equals is. Reese, what do I change that P to? 15. Okay, 15% would be what decimal? 0.15, very good. Hope, what's my of? $50. And Jalen, what's my is? Not 750. You got to put 0.15 in there instead of just 15. Okay, what is 7.5 as dollars and cents? $7 Very good. $7.50. Now, is that the selling price, class? No, it's no. more markup. That is the markup. So if you would next to it, write markup. And Isaac, what do I do when I have a markup? You add it to the original cost. You are correct. It originally cost me $50. They marked it up $7.50. Isaac, what's the final selling price? $57.50. You are correct. $57.50. This next one, a store pays $5 for an AirPod case. What is the selling price when they mark it up by 60%? Let's start once again with our formula, P times of equals is. Talila, help me with how to do this problem. Okay, so we'll change it to a decimal and get 0. 0.6. What's my of? Okay, $5. And what's the answer? $3. Okay, what is that $3? That is the markup. Good job. Talila, how do I find now the selling price? Very good. It was $5. They added $3. What's the answer? $8 is the selling price. This is the last formula of the day that you're going to have to have memorized. We learned this yesterday in our lesson. What is the simple interest formula? Close. I equals P R T. I equals P times R times T. This one's asking us to find the annual interest rate and round to the nearest whole percent. What was the formula one more time for the simple interest formula? I equals P R T. So it's going to be important that we identify what the I, the P, the R, and the T is. Okay, so let's look at the first one. What is the I? $24. Remember, that's the interest, okay? So that interest is going to be $24. What does the P stand for? Principal. Principal. The principal is the starting amount. What does it say the P is here? $400. $400. The R. What word does the R stand for? Rate. rate, okay? Rate should also be as a percentage. What is the rate? R. R. Question mark, X. We don't know what it is, so I'm just going to put a little question mark because we're still trying to figure that out. Now we've got the T. What is the T? Four months. Four months. Do we want our time to be in months? No. What do we want it to be in? Years. years. So remember that little piece of information. How many months are in a year? 
12. So 4 out of 12 months means 4 twelfths. Can 4 twelfths be reduced to what? One third. What would one third be as a decimal? Because it's easier when we're plugging things in and multiplying for things to be a decimal rather than a fraction. Point three repeating. So point three, 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 going on and on. All right. Now that we know that, that was the hardest part, figuring out the I, P, R, and T. Now we're just going to plug it into our formula. So let's write our formula at the top. I equals P times R times T. And instead, we're going to start plugging things in. Instead of an I, what will I put? I'm going to put a $24. Instead of that P, what should I put? Okay, so we already discovered that it's $400. Instead of that R, what should I put? We're just going to keep it as an R because that helps me to remember to turn it into a rate. What should that T represent? Okay, point 0.3 repeating. So times point three, 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 three. On the left side, can I do anything with that 24? No, I cannot. On the right side, can I do any work? Yes. What can I do? Uh, divide by 400 side. I don't want to divide yet because there's still some work I can do on the right side. Multiply. multiply. What am I multiplying? The 400 times the point three 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 repeating. Put that in your calculator. When you do that, you can put in as many threes as you feel like doing and then multiply it by your 400. What do you get? Uh, one, one, okay, 133.33333, and that goes on and on forever. So let's just round it to the nearest whole. We'll say 133 times R. How do I get that R by itself? Divide by 133 on both sides. Brayden, what do you get? Okay, point one eight zero four five eleven. It's kind of a funny number, right? So let's move that decimal over for it to be a percent. Now, looking at that, it's 18.04511. Going back to the instructions, it says to round that percentage to the nearest whole percent. What would that be? Listen, this is our whole number, the 18. He asks the person in the tenths place, are you five or bigger? What's that zero say? No. So does the 18 stay the same or get bigger? It stays the same. So what's the answer? 18%. For the final problem today, it asks us to find the amount of time. I want you to set it up like we just did a minute ago, I, P, R, and T, and stick in what each of those represent. All right, so the I is 30, P is 500. The R, you've got to change to a decimal, which would be what? Point zero three. Point zero three. And then the time is unknown. Stand it. All right, so we've got I equals P times R times T. The I was 30, P is 500. The rate is 0 .03, and the time is going to stay as a T. On the right-hand side, I can still work this out, 500 times 0 .03. What is 500 times 0 .03? 15. Equals 15 times T. How do I get that T by itself? Divide by 15 on both sides, and what do you get? 2. What does the units have to be? 2 years.
All right, so remember, guys, you're going to use these notes to study for your upcoming quiz on Monday.